It's very lonely being the CEO. No one cares about you. They don't. Philip Mountford, CEO, Chairman and NED, with a legacy at fashion giants like Honkamola, Mossbros and Versace. Dive deep into the mind of a top CEO to show you how to become a transformational leader yourself. I started at 17 years old. I was called a management trainee. At the end, I was the managing director. To be a good leader, you need to adapt quickly. It was on week six that my uh, CFO walked in and said, Philip, we've run out of cash. We nearly went bankrupt. We turned a business that basically was um, Marks and Spencer's underwear in a white box into a beautiful brand. Most CEOs that try to do those things fail. What is the hardest part about being a CEO? Hello, my fellow leaders. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Borostovsky. In a shocking turn of events, we've hit 100,000 downloads. I'm starting to think that you all actually like us. But seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. As I'm in the lab preparing season seven, get ready for a trip down memory lane. For the next few weeks, we're running the highlights of some of my favorite episodes. So hit that subscribe or follow button, whatever platform you're tuning in from. Your support means absolutely everything. And we literally couldn't be here without you. Leaders are born, managers are made. Each person can lead a company in a different way. I always use uh, Richard Branson. He is an incredible leader, um, but not a very good operator. With, with his amazing leadership skills, his vision, his passion, he needs people behind him to deliver on the operations. And then I always use, and I study him, Sir, Sir Terry Leahy, who is really one of the most structured, disciplined, focused, strategic CEOs that have come across very different people. If you look around him, he employed very charismatic people around him. If he said, Philip, we really shouldn't do this, I knew we shouldn't do it. He had the ability to spend money wisely. I had the best CFO that any CEO could ever, ever, ever had. He really was my number two. His name was Ron Hemmer. Most of our time, we didn't save money. We spent it to generate more valuation of the business. Lots of CFOs control cash. And what they don't do is they don't look at creating value. And Ron had the ability to say, Philip, if we spend this, we will create more value. That's quite a unique skill. Pushing. My slogan is keep pushing. I'm not sure if that is the right thing for today's CEO. The world is changing. How we work is changing. It doesn't mean that you can only get there by pushing. The CEO will be ass assessed on the valuation of the business and the profit. Okay, That's never going to change uh, because share pr prices are based off it. Valuations are based off it. Why have I I've been successful? Because we've always sold it for more money. And at, at the end of the day, it is about how do you pay down debt, at the same time, create value. If I've got this much capex, how can I utilize that to give me my best return on capital invested? Be careful about bravery. Bravery can also be stupidity. When CEOs say, we're going back to basics or we're going back to what we did when we were successful, then you know it's all over. Because there's a reason the brand moved on, because their old thing didn't work. That always terrifies me. When these things happen, I tend to always invest more money into marketing and try and push the product on even further. I don't say that's right for every brand, but it's worked for us every time there's been a challenge. We've invested heavier and we've done braver things. So it's the bravery. Most retail CEOs outside family businesses Five years is probably the longest that any CEO gets. Three is too short, 10 is too long. So is it five or is it seven? Most CEOs in fashion, you get five. Mm -hmm. Unless you've done something that is so colossal, it is success after success after success. You never get the ability to have a correction year. Within five years, you need to significantly improve the value of yeah. the business, sell it, grow it. Yeah. You, you have to build brand equity. Um, yeah, you have to pay down debt um, and you have to increase the EBITDA valuation. For CEOs of the future, what functions do you think they will come from? I, I, you know, I still think B&M is really important. There are a couple of key ingredients to successful businesses. And at the end of the day, if the product is not right, then there is nothing. 
in, in difficult times, um, C, uh, CEOs come from CFOs because it's basically about making sure you have a solid person at the helm. But in times where the, the world is moving forward, it, it probably needs to come from, still I think B&M is really the most important. And then it's close second would be marketing because it's about brand, it's about how do, how do we look to the consumer and then basically digital, which is, needs to be so embedded into every business. Whoever leads the business has to have um, uh, a vision of what you look like, both in terms of product, marketing, uh, and basically the, 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 how you basically sell to the end consumer. How, how do you want to be perceived? If you liked watching inspiring stories of leaders from all walks of life and would like to support our show, the best thing you can do is to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.